Hello everybody. Today we are going to be reviewing um, oh, sorry. Attack of the Clones. Um, I did write down some notes this time so I can actually remember key points of the movie from beginning to end and do my review a little bit better because sometimes I forget certain things or names of certain things and planets was one of them. So I did write down the names of the planets this time to remember them a little bit better, at least most of them. And I believe Coruscant is the name of where the Senate and Republic are at. So, uh, yes, that, that will be a planet name that is mentioned quite frequently because that is actually one of the ones that I remembered after watching this movie. So this is uh, after the deals have been made for trades with the Federation and the Senate and the Republic. Um, so now the, the Federation is planning something. We don't know exactly what it is. Um, and... Uh, Padme or Senator, Senator Amidala, sorry, <laughs> I mean, yeah, Amidala, has to come back to the Republic to, um, has to come back to the Republic again and more assassination attempts are being made on her. Um, Amidala believes it is Count Dooku, who is the new enemy, and the, uh, Jedi Council tells her that Count Dooku used to be a Jedi, so there's no way he would do anything malicious to harm anybody. Um, so Chancellor Palpatine puts uh, Amidala under the protection of Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi, and this is all taking place ten years later, so Anakin and Padme haven't seen each other in ten years, which is a crazy thing to think about. Um, so Anakin's all grown up now. And uh, he hasn't changed since he was a kid. He still is very deeply in love with Padme, probably more now than he was when he was a child, because he's uh, grown up and he understands his feelings a lot better. So she's put under the protection of them. Another assassination attempt is made on her after the first one at the very beginning of the movie, basically, where uh, her body double gets blown up and ends up dying. Um, so she says that it was a mistake to come back to the capital, and it's starting to look that way um, uh, right now. And one thing I picked up on is when uh, uh, Pat, sorry, Padme is under the protection of Anakin and Obi-Wan, is that uh, he's wearing darker clothing now, which kind of, uh, which to me shows his uh, struggle with the dark side, even though he may not know it yet. Because as a Jedi, you're not supposed to succumb to your feelings. You're supposed to uh, always look at the positive and not the negative, I guess, in a way. That's the best way to describe it. Um, not, yeah, not to let the negative in because the dark side can take over if you start letting negative thoughts in and give in to fear and all that, as Yoda described in the first movie. Um, so, they chase down the bounty hunter... Uh, that makes the hit on Padme near the beginning of the movie. Um, Anakin comes to a rescue, saves her from the uh, worm creatures. I'm not, I can't remember what those were called, but they were very poisonous, so if Anakin hadn't come to her rescue, being able to sense them in the room, she would have died, and that would have made for a totally different story in the movie, for sure. So Obi-Wan Kenobi goes after the assassin, and then they end up uh, catching up with her. She's a ch called a changeling, so she can change her, I guess, identity, basically, but I don't know whether she changes from, like, human to alien or such. It kind of shows the transition a little bit during the whole chase scene, which is kind of cool. And then uh, they end up, uh, she ends up getting assassinated by another bounty hunter, so clearly she has a boss, and that guy has a boss. <laughs> um, so, now we know who the real bounty hunter, well, we don't know yet who the real bounty hunter is who was behind all this. So, Obi-Wan Kenobi goes to search for them on a planet called Kamino, and uh, he ends up finding out that ten years prior to this, another Jedi had made an order for a clone army. So this is where Obi-Wan Kenobi runs into Jango Fett and Boba Fett. Boba Fett is a child at this point in time, 
and Jango Fett is the assassin who has come to Coruscant recently, even though he denies it and then tells Boba Fett they've got to get out of there. So there's a whole big battle scene between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Jango Fett, and uh, they end up escaping, um, and uh, as this is happening, Padme and Anakin are together on Naboo, and they end up starting to fall in love, which is supposed to be forbidden, but they can't hide their feelings for one another. Sorry, I'm just getting to the second part of my notes here. So then uh, Anakin finds out uh, at their stay in Naboo that his mother Shmi has been captured by... Actually, yes. His mother is in... No, he has... He finds out his mother is in danger. So he goes back to... What was the... God. That was the only planet I didn't write down. Was the one that Anakin came from. And if I can remember it, I will say it in this video. But anyway, he finds out that his mother... Uh, was sold away from slavery, and then ends up, her new husband ends up, uh, or he finds out from her new husband that she was captured by Tusken Raiders, and he hasn't seen her in over a month, so he is presuming that she's dead, because unfortunately he can no longer, he's no longer mobile, he's lost his leg, so he can't go out searching for her anymore. So Anakin decides to go out and search for her and this is probably shows his biggest struggle with uh, the dark side in this movie because he ends up killing the entire tribe of Tusken Raiders uh, men women and children he doesn't care because his mother dies ends up dying in his arms so this is slowly starting to show his struggle his with his emotions and his push into the dark side Ah uh, yes, so that was when, so then, uh, as this is happening, after the first battle scene between Django and uh, Obi-Wan, there's another one where they're flying their ships, and Django thinks that he's killed Obi-Wan in his ship, but he ends up tracking them uh, right to the planet that Count Dooku was on, and... Uh, then Obi-Wan realizes that Count Dooku is siding with the Federation. And this is when Obi-Wan finds out that uh, the Senate is in control of a Darth Lord called Darth Sidious. And Obi-Wan doesn't believe him. And there is a whole droid army. Oh, yes. Geonosis. Geonosis is the name of the planet that Count Dooku is on. And uh, so Anakin gets a message from Obi-Wan to relay to Coruscant that there is a droid army and there is uh, the Federation is planning something. But what they don't know is that the Fe or, sorry, the Jedi Order has a clone army um, so Anakin, or Padme, I guess, decides that she is going to go save Obi-Wan, even though it is against the wishes of Master Windu, but, uh, I guess, well, because Padme is in the protection of Anakin now, he kind of has to follow her wherever they go, so Padme basically says to him, you're, you, uh, because you're protecting me, I'm going to save Obi-Wan. So you kind of have to come with me no matter what. So they go to end up going to Geonosis. And they end up getting captured as well as Obi-Wan. So then they are put up for assassination by the Federation and uh, Count Dooku. And he promises that Padme is going to die. That is not what happens. What happens actually is this huge battle scene at the end of the movie. And so much takes place in this. So... They're set to be executed, and then just in the nick of time, right when it looks like Anakin, Obi-Wan, and Padme are finished, Master Windu and the other Jedi Knights come to the rescue. 
and then a huge battle ensues. Uh, a key point to the movie is Master Windu killing Jango Fett after, and uh, the fact that Boba Fett has to watch his father die. That's a pretty, uh, pretty important scene to the movie. Um, then all of a sudden, the droid army comes out. Huge battle, huge battle scene there. On, uh, on Geonosis in the, in the arena basically, where they're all set to be executed. Um, he tells Count Dooku tells, uh, God damn it, tells Master Windu to give up. Master Windu does not give up, and then just in the nick of time <laughs> again, so much goes on in, in, in like the last twenty minutes of the movie. It's crazy. Master Yoda shows up with the clone army because he has gone to, uh. He has gone to Kamino. He has gone to Kamino to get the clone army to come back and fight the droid army because now he knows about it. So then the clone army saves the Jedi Knights and then they go outside of the arena to fight the rest of the droid army. I know, it's crazy. So then a war between the clones and the droid army ensues. Count Dooku's trying to escape. We know that the Federation is hiding designs of something. We're not sure what, but it's big. Um, so then, at the end, Anakin and Obi-Wan catch up with uh, Count Dooku. They have a huge lightsaber battle. Anakin ends up losing part of his arm, which seems to be a popular injury hands, arms with the jet uh, or with the Star Wars movie movies and then Yoda comes in again and fights Count Dooku but it just isn't enough because Count Dooku has become too powerful for Yoda and he ends up having to save Eliza Obi-Wan and Anakin before they are crushed by the objects that Count Dooku decides to throw at them to distract Yoda and Count Dooku Dooku ends up escaping and ends up going back into Coruscant to the capital to clearly give the uh, hidden information about what they're building to this Darth Sidious. Now we're not sure who Darth Sidious is yet, but we will find out in this movie that I'm about to watch now. And that is that is pretty much everything. That so much takes place in this movie, so it's probably one of the most important movies in the series as far as I'm concerned because it really shows it really does have such such deep character development for all of the characters in the movie so here we go we're going to finish off the very beginning of the Star Wars series now because I'm going to about to watch episode 3 so uh, if you actually one more thing I wanted to say, if you guys want me to do a rating system of some sort, just leave a comment down below, because I haven't done a rating system for any of the movies, and I think I might have done that in previous reviews from a year ago, before I came back to doing this. So if anybody would like to see that, um, I can kind of, I can try to get some sort of rating system in here. I'm just working with my regular editing program right now on my computer, so it's a little harder. Um, once I get the other one downloaded whenever I get whenever I get the time to sit down and download that I will so I can actually get a better intro for these videos and such um, so just bear with me I will keep doing these reviews for now as they are but then uh, I will download the new program and probably get a better mic later on in the year and I'm going to clear out the spot for my desk because I've actually decided where I want to put it uh, I think so yeah I'll get that cleared out and get a desk and a better mic and better uh, stuff, probably a monitor. So, uh, well, I guess I have my laptop, so everything's set there. So just uh, leave a comment if you want me to put some sort of rating system after the movies and TV shows. And I will be uh, doing, will be continuing the uh, Two Broke Girls and It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia reviews. I'm actually going to go out tomorrow and get, uh, hopefully I can find the second seasons of both shows at, uh, Sunrise of Sunrise, Sunrise Records. So thank you for watching and bye bye for now.